What's up? It is the Sports Live on a Monday, the first reaction Monday for the NFL's uh, regular season. Week one, almost in the books. One more game tonight uh, up in uh, New Jersey with the Jets and the Bills. Uh, but one game to discuss and vent about with the Titans as the Titans start once again 0-1 to begin the regular season. The third season in a row, the Titans have started 0-1. And, and Ryan Tannehill, how much trouble uh, is he going to be in after that first performance? No touchdown scored by the entire team, so no touchdown passes by Tannehill, but three interceptions that cost the Titans an opportunity to start 1-0 with a winnable game on the road in a tough environment at the Saints. Final score, 17 I'm sorry, 16 to 15 Saints win. So Zach and I are here to react to all of it. We've got some good conversations to have about Ryan Tannehill. Is, is it more than just one really bad, horrific performance by Tannehill? Or uh, what else is in store for the Titans as they got 16 games left? So Zach, welcome in. We're also going to play a new game at the end of the show. Uh, and so it's got some Titans-related uh, context to it. But Zach, welcome in. Hope your Sunday week one went as well as it could have, better than Ryan Tannehill's, I hope. Yeah, I didn't throw a single interception yesterday. That's good. Um, <laughs> and now I didn't throw a touchdown either, but I I did get my setup down, and which is key for Sunday. That's right. I got four games going on one screen. I got a computer. I got an iPad, and I got another television. And life was good of 12 hours of football. My wife asked me at the end of the day, how many hours have you watched so far? I said, by the time I shut my eyes, it will be 12. That's the first time you get to say that. And I know. And man, did it make me happy. It was first, it, first married football season. Congrats to, to you, Zach. And, <laughs> and also, also a, a little golf clap for YouTube TV and Sunday ticket. I, I thought something was going to go wrong. I thought, you know, there's, there's going to be a streaming issue. There was not. Satellite didn't go out because there wasn't a satellite. Now, as far as the Titans are concerned, that's kind of where things kind of turned. And we'll talk about that. We've got a big show in store for everybody today on this Monday morning as we react. A lot to talk about. Mondays are going to be about football. We're going to talk a lot of football. We are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. If you are on Twitter slash X, make sure you follow us on at A to Z Sports. We'll tweet out or X out, however you want to say it, X out all of those uh, YouTube links. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 15,000 subscribers. We're well on our way, so I know you guys can do it. And if you've already subscribed, like a lot of you have, and a lot more people are watching on YouTube, which we love, if you're on YouTube, make sure you like this video. It helps other Titans fans get involved. We want to hear everybody's opinion. We're going to have a big show each and every Monday as – the real OGs, A to Z, will be on every Monday morning. The real other OGs, our Facebook family, bottom left corner of your screen, share, share now to public. Sharing is caring and caring is sharing, as we say on this show. So share the show around. We got to dive into uh, a 0-1 start for the Tennessee Titans against the Saints. Why that happened, what was the reason of that happening, and where they go from here. So let's get this party started on a Monday. Yep, let's do it officially. Welcome to A to Z Sports, powered as always by the BetMGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham. We are Nashville's On Demand Sports Talk Network, and we go live every weekday morning at 8 Central Time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Link to the show segment by segment on our Twitter X timeline. Also, hit us up and follow us on Instagram, Threads, and TikTok for more great Titans coverage and content. Uh, we got to thank our sponsors because they truly make it happen for us, and they help out all of you. Uh, like Wilson County Hyundai, make them a part of your new car buying process by seeing them in Lebanon or online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. The Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Farm to your health plans, get better with farm to your health plans at fbhp.com slash A-T-O-Z. The Aura app, keeping you safe online uh, and get a two-week free trial with Aura with our link, Aura.com slash A-T-O-Z. And Krebs Kubota, an elite Kubota dealer uh, with three great locations in the Middle Tennessee area, Columbia, Franklin, and Murfreesboro online at KrebsKubota.com. So, Zach, there's a lot to react to. Sam and I had a very good, big audience, interactive audience on our post-game show last night where we had nearly 4,000 live comments in that post-game show because... 
there was a lot of things to comment about. The Titans 0-1 after losing 16-15 to in New Orleans without scoring a touchdown. Nick Folk 5-5 five for five for field goals. But Ryan Tannehill under 50% completion percentage, zero touchdowns, three interceptions, uh, and just a really abysmal day overall for the Titans offense. Uh, and now the losing streak is at eight as it carries over from last season. So, Zach, uh, I'll let you kind of give the bigger picture view from what your initial reaction was from that Titans performance uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, let's talk about the game real quick. The game was brutal. It was brutally bad, but it was the, and they said it on the broadcast. It is a stereotypical Titans game where there's not a lot of offense, control the clock, kick the field goal, play good defense, and give your chan- your, your team an opportunity to win at the end. They did slightly, but the Saints made more plays. And Ryan Tannehill, man, this is probably, I would say, his second to worst game. You could categorize that as his worst game. I look at the Texans uh, when he threw four picks. That was the worst that we've seen. Four is more than three. But when you talk about impactful interceptions, the, the biggest part about Ryan Tannehill is two of his interceptions out of his three yielded points for the Saints. More points than they got traditionally. 10 to 6 equals 16. Titans only scored 15. That's why they lost. So 10 points coming off of turnovers, interceptions, kills, absolutely kills your team and your chances. And then, you know, Mike Vrabel, I I think we have a lot to discuss, especially that fourth down call. You know, when you're in striking territory, He elected to go what he trusted, which was his defense. The problem was Derek Carr made more plays on that defense that he trusted to maneuver downfield. And ultimately, the Saints put the nail in the coffin and ended the the Titans game or opportunity to to come back. There were were glimpses of positivity. So don't, this is not just like a, the, the, the sky is falling. DeAndre Hopkins had good and bad moments. Derrick Henry was taken out of the game at times, which was not good running the football. He had that big screen pass. The defense played well overall besides the very end when they couldn't get a stop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the offensive line, I, I will say, you know, Tannehill was sacked three times. I felt like he was sacked six. It just didn't feel the same as the actual number. You know, 17 yards lost in those three sacks. But overall... And then here's the last stat that I think is very, very key that kind of goes into Tannehill. Third down is a passing down in the National Football League. Sometimes you run, but majority of it is a quarterback's down. Mm -hmm. Austin, the Titans were two for 12 on third down. You're not going to win many football games because when your back is against the wall and you don't get third down conversions, you end up punting. Their fourth down efficiency was zero for zero. So that tells you everything that you need to know. They're two for 12. Two for 12. They didn't go for it on fourth down. So all so 10 times they gave the football back. Sloppy football game. The Titans did not deserve to win, and they didn't. Yeah, and so real quick, because Sam and I talked about this on the post-game show, about you know they had an opportunity to go for it on fourth down on fourth and five in the red zone, down uh, by a full score there, uh, four points, I guess it was, to take the lead, but they opted for the field goal to make it a one-point game. I actually agreed with Mike Vrabel's decision in that moment to stick with the field goal because of the time clock and timeout situation. At that point, there was 217 left in the game. The Titans had all three timeouts plus a two-minute warning, If you played your cards right, you get the football back with probably no timeouts, but about a minute 50 left to go down there and kick a field goal to win the game, you know, 18 to 16, right? So I understand that, but they didn't do it right because Nick Folk cost them five seconds by not kicking a touchback. That's one snap before the two-minute warning. Then they only got two snaps for the two-minute warning, and Derek Carr made the big play with a minute 55 left on third down. Uh, the big throw to the deep, fast rookie uh, who beat Christian Fulton, who might or might not have a hamstring injury that we'll have to discuss later on. Uh, so there's a lot of things there. But overall, I did not hate well, Mike uh, Vrabel's decision to to kick the field goal and to say, hey, we got timeouts. We got time. 
And to get a one stop on Derek Carr, they've been doing a really good job with that. I thought it was fine. Well, that decision, I think, also justifies that nothing has changed. And nothing has changed as the offense is still not trustworthy. Sure. Because if you have if you have good quarterback play and you have a good offense, Austin, you go for that. But I yeah, agree with you. You don't. you don't when you don't have that. So Mike, Mike Vrabel, Vrabel has to make the decision on what he thinks and what he has. And Mike Vrabel is still making passive decisions based on his offense because his offense is not trustworthy. No matter if he handpicked his new offensive coordinator, Tim Kelly, or got and signed DeAndre Hopkins in the offseason or revamped his offensive line, it doesn't matter. He doesn't trust his offense still even just one week into the season after he's completely turned it around. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah, th that's, uh, that's kind of where I stand. I, I don't disagree though with your philosophy. You kick the field goal in that situation with what you have. Yeah. Andre says, uh, Austin, the offense played like trash. What makes you think they can go down the field and score? Well, I mean, they did that four times, like four times they drove down the field to kick a field goal. Right. Yeah, but so, so you can't win in this league kicking field goals. No, yeah, but you could have won yesterday kicking field goals if the Titans defense got that stop on third down. Like it was I mean, but they could some butts, beers, and nuts. No, I know but traditionally you cannot win in the league kicking field goals. The Titans cannot I, exactly, rely I'm on not that. having I, I agree, yes, but there was that's what the situation was yesterday, which I'm fine with how Mike Vrabel did it. Speaking of Vrabel, let's hear from the Titans head coach. Uh, on what he thought about the game. He was asked about Ryan Tannehill's performance. We've got a lot to react to, and we're going to get to Ryan Tannehill here in a second. But first, we're going to play uh, Mike Vrabel's comments uh, when asked about his quarterback's performance. But first, let me tell you guys about Krebs Kubota and KrebsKubota.com. I've told you for months now that Krebs Kubota is an elite Kubota dealer uh, with three amazing locations in Murfreesboro, Franklin, and in Columbia. But hey, coming up this Saturday... That's the 16th. This Saturday, they're having a event at Delory Farms in Franklin, right off Wilson Pike, where you can go test and demo equipment. That sounds awesome. Who doesn't want to just sit in a compact tractor or utility vehicle and go test it out for free? Bring your family, bring the whole crew, and go test some incredible Kubota equipment from Krebs Kubota. It's from 10 to 3 on Saturday at Delory Farms, Wilson Pike in Franklin. It's a turn mower, zero turn mowers, compact tractors, utility tractors, uh, hay tools, uh, small and big equipment of any size right there. So go check out them, KrebsKubota.com for more information on that event that's coming up where you can just sit on and, and test and demo equipment uh, for free. Bring the kids. Great experience right there. Set, coming up Saturday, KrebsKubota.com. It is the sports download bet MGM right there in your Apple or Android app store. They are the king of sports books. Bonus code ATOZ sports. Make sure you use that, that code ATOZ sports as a bonus code for new users. All right. So let's hear from the head coach, Mike Vrabel, when asked about Ryan Tannehill's play yesterday. As far as your quarterback play, what is your assessment? Well, the, the, the coaching and the quarterback play and the, the line play and the Defensive play, everybody. It's just, you know, it's never going to be about one guy. You know, told him at halftime, like, we got to block better, we got to get into routes better, we got to get open quicker, and we have to throw the ball um, better, and the runners have to run better. So, like, that's what it's always going to be. Uh, everybody's tied in, and that, that's, that's where we're at. Week one, found some adversity. It's a great challenge on the road. You know, when we handled the environment, you know, we were able to hit some plays. Unfortunately, got behind the sticks. Too many long yarded situations, too many third and longs, which led to too many third and longs, which led to not enough conversions. He's in and you already got a uh, you already got a coach better and a play better. Uh, comment there from Mike Vrabel. Yeah, we didn't not many conversions, two conversions, coach. Um Look, coach speak. We we hear it. He's not going to throw his quarterback under the bus week one. Um, he had to take a, probably a deep breath before that press conference because he knew that question was coming. That question was justified. How do you think of the quarterback's play? It's bad. I mean, that, that's what the answer is. The quarterback did not play good enough for us to win, but we did not play good enough for them to win because it goes to a lot of points. They're, they lost this game on numerous fronts. 
three interceptions and zero touchdowns by your quarterback, though, is going to lose nine out of 10 NFL games. Mm -hmm. It just is. And so, um, I, you know, Mike Vrabel answered that question exactly how I expect him to answer it. But we all know the truth. We know that the quarterback play was bad. And I I wish that he probably would have acknowledged that a little bit more. But um, ultimately, he he took the uh, we are all at fault route. (laughs) Yeah, the Titans, one of five teams yesterday that did not score an offensive touchdown. (laughs) So the good thing is... are the Giants still getting sacked? <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like Daniel Jones is uh, still, he's probably in the training room this morning. Yeah, so the Giants, the Titans, the Texans, the Bengals, and the Arizona Cardinals all did not score a touchdown yesterday on offense. Uh, yeah. uh, the Cardinals did have a defensive touchdown there. But, I mean, you got two playoff teams from a year ago, and the Giants and the Bengals, the Titans in, in the middle, and then the worst two football teams in the league not scoring a touchdown uh, makes sense. So it's all across the board there. Well, at least the, the the Titans didn't give up. The Bengals literally gave up. Uh, the Giants hat were forced to give up. But, you know, I, I think this is a struggle where, Austin, you said this on our show Friday. And look, you're probably going to, you won't reap the benefits of this because we don't do as many shows together. So I remember exactly what you say a little bit more, right? So it's not as skewed. You said that you were excited about the transformation and the storyline of this year being Tim Kelly transforming this offense into modern day offensive football. Austin, we saw the same Titans football that we've seen watching Titans football over the last five to 10 years. Well, I don't, I, look, I, to, to, I, one, I did call myself an idiot uh, on the post game show yesterday saying I felt like an idiot for how confident I was and what Ryan Tannehill was going to be. Uh, but two, I think Tim Kelly did fine. I think if Ryan Tannehill hits a wide open Chig and a wide open Tajay Spears for 60 yard touchdowns, then we're speaking a different tune it's about. More, I agree. Uh, it's more player than coach today. I, yeah. I uh, uh, yesterday was not about the coaching staff and some of that that stuff. That was players playing football, players not making plays. All right, so let's hear from Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback, when asked about his performance yesterday after the Saints game. Yeah, it's a sick feeling you got, obviously. Um, didn't go out and play the way we wanted to play. Um, weren't good enough in the red zone. Missed opportunities, mistakes, all of it, you know. So, you know, there was a, a couple bright spots, but on the whole, just have to be better uh, in a lot of different areas. Can you walk us through the interceptions from your standpoint? Yeah, it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, you can walk through um, whatever at the end of the day, whether, you know, it doesn't matter what happened. It, it turnovers and... Um, you know, we have to eliminate those to, to give ourselves a chance to win the game. How did you attribute some of the timing that was off, some of the mistakes of being first game, still being on the same page with you? Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, definitely a factor. Um, you know, things play out a little differently in games and in practice, but uh, we just have to do a good job of being as consistent as we can um, when we have those reps in practice and then carrying it over to the game to make sure you know, that we're all on the same page and um, able to execute those plays in critical situations. It seemed like you weren't well calibrated on some of the other stuff too, on that flea flicker, um, the, the another overthrow where you had, had some open guys that could have made big plays on and, and you just off. Do, we, did you feel off today or what? No, I didn't feel off. Obviously, you know, a couple missed opportunities and then those hurt. You know, you got to be able to hit those, obviously. Um, not happy about it, but I'll go back to work and, and get it corrected and be ready next week. Well, they, uh, that's Ryan Tannehill right there. I think. Yeah, it's uh, a sick feeling you got, obviously. Um, didn't go out and play I'm, the way I'm we not, wanted to I'm play. Not, I'm not um, sure what's happening. Uh, weren't good enough in the red zone. Missed opportunities mistakes all of it you know so you know there was a, a couple bright spots but Go. on the whole just have to sure be on, better uh, in a lot of different areas uh, look ryan Tannehill, right there i think um i actually do think he should have answered take me through uh, this is buck this is a to z sports buck sat there and asked the correct question walk us through those three interceptions and he didn't do that. It, it does matter. Like, what did you see? Because, and I think what 
Buck was trying to do because they said it on the broadcast. And actually, if you look at it, one of the picks to DeAndre Hopkins, it looked like he was throwing a back shoulder, but he didn't go back shoulder. And it ended up in an INT. That was one of them. I think uh, two others were bad throws and bad reads and bad chances. Ryan Tannehill needs to take chances. Unfortunately, those chances ended up in turnovers. But I think that uh, maybe Buck need to, uh, this is my follow-up and like, I don't, I don't fault Buck for this, but my follow-up to that question, when he says that it doesn't really matter to say, well, what about the Deandre Hopkins back shoulder? Was that a miscommunication? We need clarification. And Ryan Tannehill is not the type of guy, just like Mike Vrabel is to throw guys under the bus. But I think that was a miscommunication and that, that was big, right? I mean, that that was impactful. That that particular INT, Ryan Tannehill did play bad. He had some poor decisions, but I want to know each. I, I want to know every interception and what happened. I wish he would answer that question. Yeah, agreed. And like, because you saw after the back shoulder interception and attempt to, to Hopkins. Uh, that, you, you know, there was that moment where they both looked at the tablet together and Hopkins kind of tapped Tannehill on the shoulder, uh, you know, with some type of communication on after that play. But it's really hard to tell, uh, you know, whose fault it was, whether it was Tannehill's was in the right expecting a back shoulder throw or D-Hop was in the right and expecting to go upfield uh, with that situation. So uh, let's go ahead, Zach, and ask this question to our audience uh, because we get let's get you guys involved. A lot of you guys are in here. A lot of comments flying around. How would you label Ryan Tannehill's game versus the Saints? Is it one bad game, a sign of things to come, or was Tannehill a product of his environment? How would you label Ryan Tannehill's game versus the Saints? One bad game, a sign of things to come, or the product of his environment? Uh, but first, I tell everybody about Farm Bureau Health Plans. Yeah, FBHP.com is where to go to get your, your health plan. I got my health plan uh, over a year and a half ago, and I'm really glad that I did. I've stuck with Farm Bureau Health Plans because they've stuck with me and given me great coverage, health, dental, and vision. They've got 200-plus locations across the state of Tennessee. Farm Bureau Health Plans, they have been providing over 75 years. That is like that is the incredible part. So they can be trusted and their health plan is very, very simple. So what you need to do is to get a quote, you take a health assessment, you answer a bunch of questions about your health, and then they give you a quote and you decide, should I take it or should I not? You can compare it to your old plan. I'm glad that I have Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've helped A to Z Sports. They've helped our company. They helped the Titans and the Vols. And they are, they've got a, a good stranglehold on this, on this, this state in great health plans. I mean, they truly do. And I'm glad that I'm a part of it. FBHP.com slash A-T-O-Z. And with BetMGM, you can win big, not only with our bonus code for our first bet offer with A-T-O-Z Sports. We get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet misses. But you also can win big with code A-T-O-Z 200, which means all you have to do is put a $10 money line wager down on any pro football game, and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly, regardless of what that uh, money line bet does. So check that out with ATOZ200, a $10 money line wager can win you $200 in bonus bets instantly, regardless on that when you sign up with bonus code ATOZ200. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tennessee only, new customer offer. All promotions, subject qualification, other requir requirements. First online room money wager only. Rewards issued, knowledgeable bonus bets. Bonus specs expire seven days. And for problem game support, call Tennessee Redline 800 889 9789. Zach, I'll send you to the chat to answer the question. How would you label Ryan Tannehill's performance versus the Saints? One bad game. Uh, was it a sign of things to come or a product of his environment? What's everybody saying here? Well, we got a lot of uh, of chats, and we're going to get to uh, – here's some sh super chats because, look, they, they go to the front of the line. That's just how this, this works. And he says, if you have – W. Callanan says, if you have a good quarterback – and good quarterback play, you win that game 30 to 16. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think that was the key to the Titans' success. I think the Saints were on a different plane. And then Amnesia, we'll get to yours because you're actually, your comment has to do with one of our segments we're going to do later on in the show. Um, I do want to clarify because uh, I think MB it was talking about when I was reacting to the question. He says, MB, those are hard questions right after the game. Those are better, better questions for today. The problem is, is 
Ryan Tannehill is not going to answer those. He doesn't like, speak until Wednesday. And right? then on Wednesday, Ryan Tannehill will say, well, you know, we're looking forward to the Chargers. Right. So that is, and I, I get what you're saying, MB, but that's the only time that you have to, to ask those questions is immediately after the game. And Buck was right in answering his, or asking his question. I just would have done a follow-up to kind of press him a little bit more. Um, so here's the question. How would you label Ryan Tannehill's game versus the Saints? Is it one bad game, sign of things to come, or a product of his environment? Let's get to the chat. Stephen King says sign of things to come. Jacoby just says Russ. Uh, one bad game from John. One bad game from John Foster. Two Johns, same spelling, different last names. One bad game um, from Fire right there. A sign of things to come from Cooper. Billy just says he has to go. Ashley says it's a sign, exclamation point. Product of his environment is saying Scott. So maybe it's not all over Ryan Tannehill. Maybe it brings up to the DeAndre Hopkins communication on that. Eric says one bad game. Timothy says sign of things to come. Orlando, sign of things to game. One bad game from Cost 66. Um, sign of things to come from Demetrius. Signs of things to come from Justin. Sign of things to come from Curtis. The crowd got him. Uh, IR brings up something that we have not, you know, we've gone 26 minutes into there. The crowd was a problem in that first quarter, and it affected the game plan. Derrick Henry was taken out of, and it was perfect. I mean, a crowd impacting an opponent's truly game plan of the best player that they have on their football team by from yelling. The first snap, from the first snap. And it didn't stop. Yep. And they were dead-ass silence when Derek, Derek Carr, I mean, the Superdome is notorious for that. Nissan Stadium is not. But the Superdome is, and you saw that right there. Um, Will's saying a sign of things to come. Bad game from Apollo. A bad game from Nick. Sign of things to come from Tighten Up. Uh, same old, same old from Denise. One bad game from Chandler. Uh, Valentino just says trash. I mean, there are so many comments here, yeah. and we, we appreciate it. Let's see. Andre has a super chat. says, Kelly saw that the Titans have Henry and Tannehill uh, excel in play action, so he takes Henry off the field and runs five wide. Are they trying to force moving away from them. So Andre brings up a, a little bit of maybe a product of what transpired from snap one to the end of the game. You had to adapt. And yeah, on the crowd noise real quick, they brought it up on the broadcast. They didn't adapt very well at the beginning. They were still trying to, to verbally get the snap. And that's what the Saints fans are preventing you from doing. Yeah, I, I thought there was a little bit of um, of arrogance coming in from the Titans of not d trying to not go uh, nonverbal immediately. Like you didn't start seeing Daniel Brunskill tap Aaron Brewer on the leg for the snap until the second quarter, or maybe even a little later than that. They stuck with their regular count for a lot of that first half. And yeah, I think you probably could have kept Derrick Henry in the game on first and fifteen after Trayvon Wesco had the initial false start on the first snap of the game for the Titans offense uh, and not had just bailed and gone to first and 15. Oh my gosh, we have to throw the football. You probably could have kept Henry in there for at least the threat of some play action or at least given the football to see what would have happened. Uh, but I understand why that happened that way. But yeah, three false starts coming in from Sheila John Huff in the first quarter. That doesn't help at all. And I know we'll probably talk more about Tajay Spears and Derek Henry as a whole, uh, you know, throughout this week and see how that, uh, relationship will continue and how the weight of their snap counts will continue. But to answer the question about the Ryan Tannehill topic today, I think Ryan Tannehill's performance yesterday was a product of his environment. I don't think oh. it's, I don't think it's necessarily a sign of things to come. I don't think it's just one bad game. I think there's a product of his environment of being uh, a starter again with a lot of new things around him, five different pieces in front of him in the offensive line with Brewer sliding from left guard to center, new weapons on the outside, a brand new play caller, and honestly having a little PTSD. I, you know, I think the product of his environment of having some PTSD on how terrible the Titans offensive line protection schemes and play calling was a year ago they got him banged up so bad last season where he had to have that ankle tightrope surgery to try to come back. I think all of that was a product of his environment for just not looking comfortable. 
he looked off and he didn't say he said he felt fine going into the game. I watched him throughout all the training camp minus the two practices in Minnesota. I thought that Ryan Tannehill was a product of his environment of just kind of a little bit of a freak out mode, scattered and not focused, maybe a little ADD of not trusting what he was seeing, seeing ghosts, all these types of things that led him to throw three interceptions, get sacked a few times. You said he got sacked three times, but it felt like five. He threw three picks, felt like six. I mean, he was really close to a lot of those. So I think my official answer is product of his environment. So I I think, look, I, I don't know how this is evolved. I actually appreciate that synopsis because I, I that does make a lot more sense, especially with the X factor of a product of your environment, which it was a hostile environment, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm glad the chat brought up the 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 Saints and the atmosphere because uh, that was a pretty convincing thing that you you said there, Austin. My gut though was that this is I don't think this is a sign of things to come because I don't think he's going to throw three picks and be terrible and make all of these bad decisions, Austin. He is a better offensive coordinator and he has better players around him, right? I ju- now that could happen. I mean, crazier things have have happened, but Ryan Tannehill, his history shows that he is not going to get worse or maintain this level of a three pick quarterback. He, he has he usually is like a uh, one hundred and eighty passing yards and one touchdown and one interception or two touchdowns and one interception. That's usually his stat line, right? And then yeah. he has the good games and the bad games. I actually think this is, I, I chalk this up as one bad game. Really? Because he doesn't have a lot of these games. There are quarterbacks in this league, Austin, that have a lot of these type of games. And it makes, and I look, I, I've watched, I've watched a lot of football just like we all have. We've all seen it. You've all seen like the commanders struggle through, you know, Heineke's, you know, three pick games and he did, he has like four of those. And you're like, oh man, like we've all seen it. Mariota, even like we've seen it before, even when he was with the Falcons. I just don't think Ryan Tannehill is that type of quarterback. Now, I also don't think that Ryan Tannehill is a three touchdown, one interception type of quarterback, right? I don't think that is his ratio. I think this is one bad game. I don't expect him to play as bad as he has been I expect him to get back to 200 passing yards two touchdowns and one interception and is that enough to make the playoffs like that's kind of where the Titans are Austin it's either like they're vying for a playoff opportunity they're not Mm -hmm. vying for a Super Bowl they're not vying for another AFC championship they're not in the same position as the Bills the Chiefs the Bengals, the Jets even, they're just not playing that same game. So I think this is a a bad game that Ryan Tannehill has got to improve on. Here's an X factor. Austin, who do they play at home in their home opener on Sunday? The LA Superchargers. You're going to have to score a hell of a lot more points than five mother effing uh, field goals. You have to score touchdowns. Well, I, I think the Chargers defense gave up five touchdowns to the Dolphins. <laughs> I don't know if the Titans can score them. Yeah, I mean, look, I do there's think... Not Tyree Hill. There's not a 200-yard guy on the Titans, I don't I, think. I do want to say this, because I... The exact... The, fl- the reverse flea flicker play to Chig, I watched them run that exact play multiple times in practice. And there were, there have been things that I've said on these shows throughout all of training camp of, Ooh, I saw something, but I can't really tell you what it is, but they're going to be more creative and it looks pretty good. That was one of those things. It was wide open every time in practice and every time in practice, Ryan Tannehill made the connection on the flea flicker, whether it was to chig down the sideline or NWI or another receiver across the middle on a post. They've run that play so many times throughout the last six weeks. And every time it was connected on, I, then, you know, he just flat out missed Chig. That, but that's, he, that, that's my justification of one bad game. Ryan Tannehill usually makes those throws. Yeah. 
Like, his, historically, we've watched enough Ryan Tannehill, guys. Chat. Ryan Tannehill makes those throws. He had a unorthodox amount of bad throws. I've not I'm, I'm seen gonna, Ryan I'm Tannehill gonna, make those bad throws that either ended up in bad incompletions that took away chunk plays or they ended up in interceptions. I've got stats, Zach. I've got a lot of stats. I've got stats on Ryan Tannehill's incompletions, and I've also got stats on why this is now a trend that Mike Vrabel cannot continue to ignore because he has been ignoring it for quite a bit. But first, let me tell everybody about our great sponsor, Aura. Aura keeps you safe online. Aura.com slash A-T-O-Z is where you should go for a two-week free trial for all of Aura's services. Aura uh, can protect you with your password management. Aura can protect you with everything that you've got with your identity and credit theft monitoring. Aura can protect you with um, you, the data brokers that are constantly selling your information to robocallers and spammers and telemarketers. So check them out, Aura.com slash ATOZ for a two-week free trial. It takes three minutes to sign up. Honestly, three minutes to sign up for Aura. They got rid of data brokers for my life in five or six days. We're giving you a two-week free trial. That's at Aura.com slash ATOZ. I am an Aura user as well. You got, hey, Look, it, it helps. It does help. It's the, the facts. What also will help, you can win some cash, cold hard, right here on your phone. Use the bonus code ATOZ Sports. Talking about BetMGM. Download the app today. All right, so, Zach, you talked about the incompletions. He had 18 incompletions for Ryan Tannehill yesterday. 17 completions. That's under 50% completion percentage. So I was listening to Titans talk back on the zone with Brent Doherty and Kevin Dyson. I started... Kevin Dyson mentioned that 11 of those 18 incompletions were pass breakups or deflections by the Saints defense. How about that? 11 of 18 incompletions were passes that were deflected. And they did play good defense. Lattimore yes. is no joke. He is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And he, he doesn't get the credit or notoriety like, you know, he could be a, you know, Jalen Ramsey, Darrell Revis, Richard Sherman. At the height of their careers, they were notoriously the best cornerback in the league. Lattimore is that type of guy. Yes. So 11 deflections. You add in the three interceptions. So there's 14 of the 18 incompletions. Then you add in the misses to Chig and Spears on the two could have been touchdowns. Now that's 16 of the 18 incompletions. Then Traylon Burks had his drop. And then the really, probably the best throw of the day from Tannehill that was right off the hands of Spears in the end zone. It was a really good throw where it just went over Spears' fingertips and threw his paws there early in the game. There's the 18 incompletions. So it's like two wide open touchdowns that were missed and eight, 11 deflections is just absolutely nuts. Uh, for Ryan Tannehill right there that he was just throwing in harm's way all day long. Uh, the so two this... misses though were deadly. Those are chunk plays. Those are touchdowns, Austin. Yeah. No doubt. Both uh, no of doubt. them are touched. Tajay Spears and Chiga Conquo run away from every defender in those situations. Yeah. And if the Titans score two touchdowns, the Titans are winners. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and the saints got their fingertips on, 20 of uh or 14 of Ryan Tannehill's 34 throws, which is pretty nuts. But here is the trend that Mike Vrabel can no longer ignore because this is now an, a trend and this is now part of the Titans uh character with Mike Vrabel and Ryan Tannehill. Yesterday was the fourth week one where Tannehill was a starter under head coach Mike Vrabel. The Titans averaged just 16 points a game in those four week one openers. They, they're one and three in those games with the one win being at the Broncos in COVID on double Monday night, 16 to 14. They honestly a touch, put up a, a lot of field goals there too. <laughs> a lot of field goals missed in that game. If you remember the Titans actually had a really good offensive output. They stalled in the red zone and Guskowski missed, I think three or four field goals before he actually hit the game winner uh, to win by two, but it's the Broncos win and then three consecutive losses in week one. All the NFC opponents, the Cardinals just scored 13, got embarrassed. The Giants scored 20, 
uh, but lost with a missed field goal at the end of that game to win. And then yesterday, the Saints only scoring 15 points. So just 16 points on average uh, in week one in those four. Like four is enough. In my opinion, four is enough data for me to say, this is what the Titans do in week one. They suck. They don't score points in week one. And honestly, that's why my pregame prediction yesterday was Saints to win 17 to 16. I was pretty freaking close. But the Titans do not score points in week one. And Mike Vrabel will go up there and say that it's not because they don't play their starters in the preseason. Well, I kind of feel like it is. <laughs> because Ryan Tannehill has thrown zero passes in the preseason as the Titans starting quarterback in the last three preseasons since COVID didn't have a preseason. And they've been pretty bad in scoring points in week one. So I think that is a trend. So next year, who knows who the quarterback's going to be, but I, I, I can bet a lot of money if I could at BetMGM that whoever the starting quarterback's going to be better throw the football in preseason games and actually do something more than just hand the ball off three times and punt. Let's get to some super chats and amnesia. I didn't forget about you. You'll you'll set us up and and be the tease for our next uh, topic. But thank you to Boogeyman and Dell Brown for the super chats right there. Eric says uh, Chig and Burks have to have more than five combined targets. What's that about? I, I I'm I'm with it. I know I love that DeAndre Hopkins had 65 yards and a bunch of targets, and that rapport is valued, but. Eric brings this up, and I, I don't think you can disagree with what this – and they tried to get Burks on, like, the end around. Burt, we – I guess, let me ask you this. What yeah. did you learn last year from Traylon Burks of what he does well? Runs with the ball after the catch? Yeah. Crossing routes. Yeah. that Crossing routes. I mean, that's it. Figure it out. That's what he does well. Crossing routes. Now, he's not of the A.J. Brown crossing route type of guy, but if you can get him with a head of speed and, and a guy chasing him, he can run away from him and go upfield and gain more yards. I, you just didn't see that. So, and Chig, Chig had the one opportunity, but it was a bad ball. That's not Chig's yeah. fault. So you got to get him had, involved, too. Burks's three targets were all in a row. It was one, two, three. It was, it was like it was, he. It was like Tim Kelly was like, "Oh wait, we got Traylon Burks is on the team. I forgot his his knee was is actually healthy. He, he started today. I, I think the fact that they gave him, and I said this in the post game show, the fact that they gave him an end around made me feel better about his knee moving forward because that is something that, based off our conversation with the Bone and Joint Institute, doing an end around is something that would make that knee a little bit less stable and feel kind of loose. Uh, but they gave it to him and let, they let him run to the left on that left LCL sprain to make a cut one way or the other. So that makes me feel better about his knee long-term. But yeah, he should have had more looks than just three targets in a row. Juan brings up play calling definitely had something to do with the loss yesterday. 15 carries for Henry in a game it, that they're in is inexcusable. What do, you, what do you think about Juan? We talked a little bit about the crowd taking Henry out of the game to start. But really, Henry's success... He had a couple of chunk runs, but it was the screen pass. That was it. You know, he, he started off averaging nine yards a carry his first four carries, and then it slowed down quite a bit. So however many yards he ended with, 36 of them were in the first four. So once Derrick Henry, the Saints adjusted well to Derrick Henry, and so that's where I think the Titans had to go away from it because in – uh, the second half, when Derrick Henry carried the football, he might have gotten one or two yards or three yards, but that meant a passing down the next way. So over half of his carries came on his first four attempts, and then he had less than half of his carries on the remaining 11. So that kind of tells you of the Saints adjustment, and you have to give credit to them on that one. Darren says the personnel grouping still isn't impressive. Pulling Henry off the field at this point and passing is playing checkers. Darren brings a, a point up that we've talked about. That that's Derrick Henry, though. Like, if you have Derrick Henry on your team, you're not going to put him in third down spots. You're just not. His action as a pass catcher on third down, in which it is a passing down, 
is not as valuable as Tajay Spears in the game. And it is checkers, right? Because you're not trying to fool anybody. You're sitting there saying Derrick Henry's on the sideline. Tajay Spears is in the game. It's third and five, third and six, third and eight, third and 12. 22 is not going to be in the football game. That's how it's always been. And that's how it's always going to be. You know, isn't that the sacrifice? I think, in my opinion, that's the sacrifice that Derrick Henry on your football team forces an offensive coordinator uh, to make. Ryan brings up, we want Levis, which, man, I, I thought it was going to be a little bit longer before. Levis is the third string quarterback, Ryan. You're going to see Malik Willis before you see Levis, in my opinion. Um, Connor Kills says, disagree with Austin. It mostly falls on Ryan Tannehill, not the environment. Isn't the first time he's been in a new offense, or this isn't the first time he's been in a new offense or new OC. Inexcusable performance. Connor, I kind of agree with the, the one. I mean, it's a one bad game. Now, if he starts to get two and three bad games, now that's a problem. And now I do think that Malik Willis and, and Will Levis are more in play. Um, Ryan, a lot of super chats coming here. So I want to ch check these off. Mike made the change to Tannehill we, uh, when we needed a spark. If this continues, maybe it's time for another spark. Talking about that quarterback situation and Levis and possibly Malik Willis coming in. I think you're going to be underwhelmed, honestly, on that. Um, Chris says, no one played in preseason, no matter how much super talk or sports talk people hate preseason games, it matters to play a half. And Ryan Tannehill didn't do that. I mean, at the end of the day, he didn't play in the preseason. Uh, Jordan, well, he played one, I think, three and out series uh, against the Patriots at home. Uh, Jordan brings up, is having three interceptions and only losing by one a little bit of a silver lining? Flying in from Texas for Jordan's first Titans home game. I mean, this is a silver lining. This is a glass half full type of uh, of deal. I I sit there and I look at it and I say, maybe? Uh, I just don't think that the offense has completely changed or transformed I think it's still the same type of Titans offense which is concerning with new pieces now will will next Sunday be different uh you would hope you would think at home different environment the crowd is not infiltrating your entire you know game plan maybe but three INTs only losing by one and essentially you're in the game but Derek Carr did make the plays I mean at the end of the game, the plays that needed to be made were made by the Saints, not the Titans. And you kind of put your defense – look, you, you you justify, you put your defense in the position that they're in. But that was a tough situation at the end of the game, and the Titans' defense couldn't hold couldn't hold tight. Uh, having some technical difficulties. We're getting Austin back in here uh, with hopefully his microphone in there. Austin, can you try to speak? Can you hear me? Yes. God, I don't know what the heck is going on, but I, it's very strange for me. So I don't know why. But that was a good monologue, though, by myself. I don't know if you were hearing me, but I was. So, the me and the chat were having some good conversations, or you're getting your mic fixed. That's well, called, you That's called Hugh Freeze filibustering. Yeah, you haven't done a show in a while like this, so that you had plenty saved up to talk about. And we had good comments, but I, I, I think. Uh, and uh, this will lead us into our next topic because I'm going to go back to amnesia. This is uh, another super chat. What about the fumble or the incomplete pass? Amnesia says, how is that a fumble in week 18 that cost the Titans the game? It is an incomplete pass in week one that's led to them losing the game. Inconsistent officiating needs to be addressed now. So Austin, you're settled in. Let's talk about this, which is a a pretty damn big play of that game. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, we want to ask this question to everybody, to, to and we'll hear from Mike Vrabel here in a second. Was the ref's botch call on Derek Carr's fumble a big deal, small deal, or no deal in the outcome of that game? Was it a big deal, small deal, or no deal in the outcome of that game? We'll hear uh, from Mike Vrabel 
uh, here in a moment about what he thought uh, from that uh, situation there. But first, uh, let me tell everybody about our friends uh, at the Bone and Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Whenever an injury happens in life to you or someone you love and trust, uh, make sure that you can go to the Bone and Joint Institute uh, to help out. I don't know why my graphics are not working either. Something's going on with my computer today, but the weird thing is I can see and hear like normal. But the Bone and Joint Institute can help you out right there. Uh, in Franklin, they have the region's destination. Maybe they can help out Christian Fult with his hamstring issues that he continues to have as well. Uh, but check them out in Franklin, boneandjointtn.org. They always help us out and teach us something about all the Titans injuries uh, whenever it happens uh, with the LCL sprain or with anything you've got going on in your life. I've been to the Bone and Joint Institute for my back, my shoulder, my foot. Uh, so they can help you out all in one spot right there in Franklin, boneandjointtn.org. A to Z Sports, we're powered by BetMGM. Download the BetMGM app. A-T-O-Z Sports is the bonus code. The best part is you get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet misses with BetMGM and you're a new user and you use the bonus code A-T-O-Z Sports. So right there, BetMGM, download the app today. Let's hear from Mike Vrabel, though, because Vrabel on that play, right, Derek Carr goes back. It is called an incomplete pass, picked up by Kevin Byard, run back for a touchdown, and they go back and review it. So it's clearly picked up. So at worst, the Titans would get the football. They end up calling it incomplete, and the Saints keep the ball. Here's what Vrabel had to say about that play. It felt like the officials blowing the fumble recovery dead, though, was a bit of a momentum changer, was it not? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, whatever it is, you know what I mean? They're going to let it play out sometime, you know? Next week, that, that's going to be a, a fumble, and then the next week it's going to be an incomplete pass, and the next week it's going to be a fumble. Um, so if you're asking me, uh, that we should let replay sort it out. I would tell you that we should let replay sort it out. You know, you can go back and look, you know, show the team a lot of things that, that we covered uh, came up today, you know, planned the recovery of the ball. I was, you know, proud of the way that, that Kevin didn't flinch and went and got the ball and the way that we tried to affect the quarterback and it just didn't go our way. They called it incomplete. And once it goes to replay, they need clear and obvious evidence that, that it wasn't a, uh, a pass. What constitutes a throw there in your estimation if the quarterback is pushing the ball with his hand? I, again, with, I could sit here and debate it. What, what needs to happen is that we all understand that the, the, the call on the field is critical. And then after that, you know, you need clear and obvious evidence to overrule the call on the field. So, um, good play there by the defense, but just didn't get there quick enough. And, you know, that wasn't the reason that. Uh, that we lost today. I got a lot to say on this. Yes. I I agree. I, here, I'll start with this. That sounds like a man saying it's too early in the season to get fined. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my mouth shut and not really comment on how I feel. But I do think Vrabel brought up some good points. I think number one, how it is called on the field is crucial. Yep. And usually, usually, majority of the time, in my opinion, in watching football, they usually give the quarterback the benefit of the doubt in that his that he had control of the football. Look, this is a huge major factor in football. It has been since the tuck rule and Tom Brady won that Super Bowl. Mm. But calling it on the field matters. They usually call it incomplete where – I think they should call it a turnover, right? Because it's automatically replayed. A coach doesn't have to use your challenge. You're using the system to your advantage. All of these th these things are benefiting the ref, and they still didn't take advantage of that. And I think the worst part is they had an opportunity to look at it. You, everybody in this chat, everybody in this room, everybody that is a nonpartisan just doesn't give a, a damn about the Saints or or the Titans would say that's a fumble. I the refs 
cost the Titans points. I mean, that's just as honest as it is. At minimum, they cost, yes, a a possession. So, yes, three three points. No, because the Saints, what happened? It was That was third down. Third and long, Saints, incomplete pass, kick a field goal, and now it's nine to nine. Or nine to six, or six to I forget whatever it was, but it was it was a field goal that they scored uh, right after that play uh, in the first half. So it it could have been a ten point swing, but at the very least, it cost the Titans three points because it should have been first and ten Titans football. And like that's the problem that I had with these referee crews. And I think you're right. Mike Vrabel is is saying it is way too early to be fined, but it's also way too early in the season for referees to make it, to be making fundamental mistakes. Because Mike or is Vrabel, it? or isn't that justified? No, it's too early. This There's is nothing clear. justified, but no, they haven't been doing it. As no, the, this uh, is so mistakes this are is, more likely to happen. Zach, this is as clear as day. We all know this. Referees are having an emphasis being placed on calling things and letting things go that are easier to fix with replay review. That's the whole thing. It's you're a human. You're going to get things wrong. That's okay. Get something wrong that allows the computer or the eye in the sky to help you. And the right way to do that is to let it go. Let the thing play out. That's what happened in week 17 when Josh, or week 18 when Josh Dobbs fumbled. They let it go. And it was a scoop and score touchdown. That's the right thing to do. Let the turnover happen and you can go fix it later on. But you can't fix it if you don't let the turnover happen. And the same thing can be said about the first play of the game, the opening kickoff, because what had to happen, Mike Vrabel had to use a challenge on the first four seconds of the entire season. So the referees didn't just make a mistake there in the fumble. They made a mistake on the first active play of the season by not calling that a fumble and then having an automatic review to go see, okay, did he have possession before he went out of bounds? So they botched multiple things in that game and it cost Mike Vrabel two challenges and he lost one of them. There's that whole thing. And then there's the whole thing on how do you go back and look at that as a review and still call it an incomplete pass. That's my more focus. The first play of the game is a tough boom, boom, close to the sideline. If If there is any doubt that it's a turnover, let it be a turnover. I don't, are they, I don't know if they're taught that. Yes, they are. It's I, like, yeah, I know. I know. But what I'm saying that's, is, that's is the like, whole reason why they make the rule that every turnover is reviewed. <laughs> so you can go back and look at it. No, and that's every, logic. That's why it. every scoring play is reviewed and every turnover is reviewed. So when in doubt, call it a score or call it a turnover. So nobody has to challenge it and it can be fixed. If a referee makes a human error, it's not that hard, but the referees, do it wrong all the time. You can't argue that. Here, so here, here's another. Eric brings this up while we're on the topic. He says, I still believe it was pass interference on the pass to Chris Moore in the end zone that ended in a tip interception. What do yeah. you think about that? I mean, yeah, it could have been because Chris Moore was not physically able to come back and fight for the football. And we've seen the Titans be victimized by deep pass interferences on severely underthrown deep balls before. And, you know, any Titans, de- insert Titans DB name, gets flagged for a 40-yard penalty. So I can see that. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not pulling my hair out over that. It's the, the – and, and Chris is correct on, on Facebook. It was a hold first. So at the very least, it could have been a hold on the DB before the ball was in the air. So yeah, was, the referees were objectively bad. If you're trying to rank the worst performances of the day, Ryan Tannehill's number one, and the referees are probably number two. Then Andre Dillard. Then Trevor Penning. There's your worst performers of the game. Was it a big deal, small deal, or no deal? Small. I think it's a small deal because it was a first-half play and the Titans still had a chance to win the game regardless. I think it should have been called a fu- like I think the correct call is should have been called a fumble. Kevin Byard scores, so it's a touchdown. That's mm-hmm. why I think it's a big deal. And the Titans can't score touchdowns, so Byard's got to have to help him out. And that is the correct call would be fumble, and then we saw it play out. Byard scores a touchdown. Now you could argue that it was called dead. The Saints player stopped running, so he wouldn't have scored. Uh, that's yeah. here nor there. But I just think that that type of play in that type of game is 
those things are big deals because the, the it's razor thin, right? The the error is razor thin. You you cannot have their margin of error is, is too small in that type of game. So that's why I think it is more of a big deal than a small deal. It's definitely not a no deal because, but it's not why the, ti- the Titans lost. They I mean, the lost Titans lost so by one. Other- the Titans lost by one. If that was called a fumble after the review that it looked like, the Saints don't have an extra field goal. Yeah, but that's the ifs and buts game, and I, and I cannot. But that's you a cannot first down take away point. If they would have that covered thir- on the last drive, you know. But that like, no, that takes that directly correlates in in three points by the Saints. Like that call directly correlated into three points for the Saints. No, I. I I understand. I think it is a big deal. I just think that if you put a gun to my head and you ask me, why did the Titans lose? I'm not yeah. going to say because of that ref's bad call. Sure. I think it was a, a big deal, but probably, I don't think that that was the reason why they lost. It, yeah. The reason why is because Ryan Tannehill was abysmal. And then you can say, if you're listing things, second is the referees made some really bad calls that did not go the Titans way that directed in. Points. Yeah. I also would say how impactful yeah. was, I mean, I think we're downplaying a little bit more. I think the crowd is up there. I think it got them out of their rhythm very yeah, early sure. on. And when you get out of your scripted 15 plays, Austin, like you've been working your, you know, all six months for those 15 plays and drum on West go Nor- New, or- New Orleans, you know, fans <laughs> down there in, in NOLA, took you singularly out of your last six months. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, Zach, we have a new game that we're going to be playing at the end of Monday's show. We want we want Mondays to be as much about football reaction as possible. So we're going to have a new game here uh, at the end of Monday's show. But, Zach, I'll let you set that thing up and tell us all about our, our great sponsor, Wilson County Hyundai, as well. Yeah, Wilson County Hyundai is where you need to go. They are sponsoring. This is a new flavor. What we wanted to do is give more football talk, and we're going to have a smaller segment. We used to ask me anything. This is a form of ask me anything, I guess. But all of our end-of-show topics are brought to you by Wilson County Hyundai. Quick trip down I, uh, I-40, exit 236, wilsoncountyhyundai.com. Check out their inv- inventory online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. All right, here's a new game, and this is a little bit on the fly, and we'll build on it. Sure. There is an opportunity. I also want to make sure that we didn't leave any Super Chats out of the way. I think we got all the Super Chats, so shout out to the chat. In honor of a birthday, this is kind of getting started off correct. What we're going to try to do on Mondays is give you, damn, uh, as much time as possible talking about the game, Mm -hmm. football, and then shorten our end of show segment. The first person that get this correct, and Austin, it may be you. You're kind of separate because you have the ability to answer verbally. But the age game. Today, we are going to ask, at first, actually send a very happy birthday to Titans play-by-play announcer Mike Keith, also Battleground Academy alumni, which is my high school. So Wildcats <laughs> forever right there. Mike Happy Keith. birthday, Mike Keith, voice of the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, I, I'm sure he's feeling great after that week one performance. How old is Mike Keith? Now, Ooh. this is, uh, this is you know, he, Mike didn't uh, ask us to do this, but the first person <laughs> to get this correct, how old is Mike Keith? We're going to do this, and we've got, we just want to guess. I love this game. Do you the have the answer? To get to, yeah, I've got it. Do you, you have to submit your, your answer as well, Austin. Yeah, um. Ooh, man, Mike is a, whatever his age is, he's a very young version of that. And, and that's why I don't feel as bad asking this question, yeah. right? Because people, you know, are like, oh, you're getting old. All that. I don't feel as bad because Mike doesn't look like no. his age. No, he looks phenomenal. He's in great show, shape. He just had his shoulder redone by our friends at the Bone and Joint Institute. Talked about that in training camp. So let's see here. Um, he's been the voice of the Titans now for 28 years. So I so I I think he was probably mid to late twenties when he took that job, maybe thirty. So I'm gonna say Mike Keith is fifty six years old, fifty six years young today for the voice of the Titans. Mike Keith, fifty six is my answer. Final I have no A to clue. Z. I final A to Z. I guess Mike Keith is fifty six. 
All right. So first guess, and this is this is why as we play this game, you got to be quick on the trigger. And there's going to be some momentum build up to who I'm going to ask how old they are, so you can't cheat, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it, it. There's no googling, right? You're not going to be able to get it, get it quick enough. The first guess was Mark at 57. So you said 56. Mark says 57. Pork Porkington was the second guess Ooh. at 56. But the correct answer is Mike Keith officially. And this is via Wikipedia. So that's all I can say. September 11th. 1967. Oh. 1967. So. 56. He's 56. Yeah. I got it right. <laughs> Pork Porkington is our winner. Along with Austin Stanley, you two have won the notoriety of winning <laughs> the age game. Maybe we can come up with some something that you guys can win. But this is kind of on the fly end of show topic as we start this season. Pork Porkington and Austin Stanley are the champions, or as as the late David Stern would say, the champions <laughs> of the age game. Congratulations! And it oh. only took two guesses. Yeah, that's pretty impressive on the chat. And I like I'm not touching a single button today because I don't want anything to blow up. And so I had no idea what the chat said. <laughs> so, so here, this is what you win. Brad, you you are uh, you win a golf nice clap. golf clap. Yeah. So Pork Porkington and Austin, uh, enjoy your win for the week. And we will be back next Monday for uh a new age game. I like it. I like it. Very good. Uh, Well, we've got tons of Titans reaction to continue. Uh, There will be a press conference today with Mike Vrabel. Maybe we'll learn more about what the film told the head coach there. Buck Rising will be live for A to Z Sports primetime tonight at 8, back after he traveled late last night back from New Orleans and Nashville. Uh, So go check out everything we have written at A to Z Sports.com. There's a great Titans tab right there for all of our Titans game reaction and and every other coverage that's going to happen. Make sure uh, that you like the show before you go. Hit that thumbs up button. We greatly appreciate that. We need more people to like the show. We always, always, way more people are watching that have hit the thumbs up button. So if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you can hit the angry face all day long, all you want. But we just want those those like hits uh, for us. Subscribe to our channels as well as we're just kicking off this Titans football season uh, with a big way. So we'll see you guys tomorrow morning on a Tuesday. Talk to you later. Appreciate it as always. Adios.